You're walking through the woods around Chris. Ah, there's a huge spider! It jumps down out of nowhere and aims its butt right at your face and shoots a huge glob of web at you. Time slows down around you as the horrible sticky wad sails through the air directly at the part of your head where you keep your most important sensory organs. Sorry, I guess that was a weird way to phrase that. I couldn't think of a good synonym for face. Hello, my name is ASDF, and we are jumping back into Shadows Over Loathing. Now, you know me when I play RPGs. I really like to finish the side quests, but until we find or buy or loot a crowbar, I don't know that we can do the side quests. Um, and also, to finish the boardwalk, we need one more moxie, because we need three of each. And uh, I'm thinking of doing Swiss Cunning, but we need nine, uh, 11 more experience for that. So we're going to go ahead and proceed with the main quest, see what's up with Jessica. I found the watch. It was complicated. I'd be more surprised if you told me it was simple. Well, you know the drill. Strap it on and jump in the uncursing machine. It's a pocket watch. It doesn't. Just uncurse the thing and get some sleep, okay? You look like you've been through the ringer. I won't dispute that. Okay, let's sit in the uncursing machine, sit in the chair which is surprisingly comfortable, and pull the weird metal dome thing down over your head. What would you like to uncurse today? The dangerous pocket watch. The machine snorts in the pocket watch. Oh, this snorts the pocket watch up into its dome and begins its strange and loud work. The pocket watch is pulled this way and that. It ticks. It cuts the top cots and it, three hands are forcibly bent back. You swear you heard screams and then it's done. The watch falls in your lap. Hands now set to 131202. You got an item. Uncursed pocket watch. Once per fight, reduce an enemy's muscle mysticality and moxie by three. That's even better than our broken duck call. Uh, the watch is full of spiders. The watch's curse now resides within the machine. Want to project your consciousness into it? Why not? In your mind's eye, you see the hands of the pocket watch spin back on themselves with jittery violence. With each revolution, the face of the watch itself expands until it is larger than you and the building and the street. Your whole world lives in the blur of the fast-running hands in which you see life go by in reverse time. Submarines turn to longships, cities to stone dwellings, cowboys to courtesans. You're traveling faster and faster to the beginning of time itself, and there's no telling when this ride will end. Here we go. I'm a dinosaur. We have a message. Um, you check the message pad next to the phone, there's a note for you. Dinosaur, no phone number. We ate the phone, of course. Uh, we gotta eat Charles. Hey, easy, ba easy does it, baby, we're all hungry. Yeah, baby, yeah. Okay, that, that's not helpful. Open the door. 10 dexterity with these two salad forks? No, you lack the opposable thumbs necessary to turn a doorknob. You completely contained in here unless you figure out how to open doors. I don't know anything about dexterity, I'm a dinosaur. Let's break it down. You slab your prehistoric tummy against the wood, but it doesn't even make a dent. Maybe that's why dinosaurs went extinct. They couldn't open doors. Eat the cat? No. No, no. No, I don't want to eat the cat. Knock the chair over. Oh, eat the chessboard. Thank you. We don't have any dexterity? Oh, we don't even have a menu. Unstitch the rug 200 dexterity. What's up, Yoshi? Welcome. Eat Jessica. What strangeness afflicts thee? Never mind, for the sun transits in the horizon, and I grow ever the more in need of thy assistance. Understand, whilst you sleep under this roof, thou art my lodger, and signature on this paperwork is by me required. A provocative remark, sir, and by thee well made. Uh, curious, sir, for I do not believe those doors to be locked. Well, what do I know? And thou will find me in the telephone table thither, a key to satisfy thy need. Okay, we can't sign the thing. Can we eat the... Uh, to do, open a door, eat Gabby, eat the cat. Okay, let's go eat Gabby. Whoa there, boss! What got y'all horns and rattles? Been dipping into the nose paint again? Uh, sure is, partner, sure is. Uh, uh, hey, Gabby, I'm done. Oh, arg, arg. Whoopa, pee pew. I'm the quickest draw in the West, sure enough. Uh, oh, I don't know. Uh, never had a head for puzzles, ASDF. That's got me right funkified. Okay, can we. We can't eat Gabby. Can't read the paper. Can't read a book. Can't break it down. What do we do? What do we do? Um, real groovy pocket watch you got there, SDF. I like the way it tick, tick, ticks, you understand me? Rawr. 
A lot of power in that timepiece. A lot of power. Would you make a promise to me, baby? Would you promise not to throw that power away? A lot of good can be done with that groovy power, baby. Um. Yeah, let's do it, man. Groovy, baby. Absolutely smashing. Shake on it, baby. Uh, okay. Can you open the door? Uh, what's the... Okay, that's not helpful. I guess we're gonna have to attempt to eat the cat. Okay, cat ran off. This is progress. Let's knock the chairs over. Oh, we gained a dexterity from knocking the chairs over. Okay, now we have two dexterity. Now we can probably flip the table. Now we have three dexterity. We can open the desk drawer. Okay, this is progress. We're making it. We're pulling out the drawers. Uh, messages, none. We can eat the table. Your stomach is bigger than your brain, and you devour the entire table in a quick few bites. The key to the door is now lies safe and sound in your dinosaur stomach. Oh, maybe we shouldn't have done that. Oh, well. Okay, radio isn't tuned. We've done all this stuff. Um, cat's still running away. To do, to do, to do. Can we... Oh, we still can't sign. We need nine dexterity for that. We need six dexterity to read the paper. I don't know what to do here. I just, uh, I really don't know. Okay, let's try it again. Maybe it'll reset. It did not reset. Okay, what am I missing here? What is there th something that'll give us one dexterity? Because we have six, we have five right now. And then it, the shelf full of books. Okay, talking to Gabby. Can't sign our name there. So it's gotta be Charles. Oh, we could shake hands with Charles. A, so a strong, sh solid handshake. You gain one dexterity. Now we can read the book. Gain a dexterity from reading the books. We can read a paper. So now we have eight dexterity, which means we can do the to do list. Now we have nine. Your challenge card, the letters help into the chalkboard, which is, I think, what we needed for the door. No. Um. Jessica needed not oh yeah to sign in right sign your name boom you scroll on an easy line I'm much obliged to SDF I hope from now on thy sleep is all the more sweet for its legal correctitude now we have 10 we can open this door let's go let's open the other door first before we can't go back so we meet at last uh, with I looking the older man though you are far older than I shall ever be uh our growl we are the Alpha and the Omega. You, the beginning of time, and I, its end. Will you walk with me, dear friend, to watch the death of our world and the birth of another? Uh, I'm just trying to uncurse the pocket watch, pal. Oh, it's the void that we've seen from everywhere else. Okay, tick, tick, tick. The hands of the uncursed pocket watch beats on, boats with the current, born correctly into the future. You pull the pocket watch out and look at it. It's gained some luster by five. That's nice. Okay. <laughs> yeah, baby. Okay. So now let's equip that real quick because that's... Oh, it's already equipped. Um, thank you for the lurk, Pink Ninja, and welcome. Now we can go do the boardwalk because... Uh, oh. In an alleyway, you encounter some poor street urchins struggling with their math homework. Tutor them. You give the kids a few pointers about math and the insults they hurl at you in reply to do nothing to diminish your sense of smug satisfaction. Nice. Thanks for the look, Yoshi. Appreciate it. Okay, and now we need to do... Uh, we need to get this upgrade from Moxie. Now we can do this thing. Oh, do we have any more hats for this guy? We do. Uh, no, we did all those already. This game. Talk to the attendant. The challenge. It's it's like that triple ultra mega challenge. You spend 10 minutes. You aim the dart while winding up your arm for the hammer swing and squinting at the proprietor. Well, you look about 38, but you reek of cigarette smoke, so I'm gonna say 34. Nicely done. Right on the money. Here's your prize. Some fancy new beach shoes. He takes a pair of clogs out from under the counter and hands them to you. You got an item. Crab clogs. That's not as exciting as I thought it would be. I'm disappointed. Okay, but we got the pocket watch. We still can't do Dirch's house. We still can't go to Hiram's grocery because we need the crowbar. We need cigarettes for Dirch. We need the crowbar for Hiram, which then gets us to Marvin on the mailbox. And we don't talk about this uh, no house thing. So I think we still need to just continue. 
We can wander, I guess. Thank you for the Spearmint Tappy, Gabby. Appreciate it. Let's go back to Plunkett Street. Oh. A well-dressed man flags you down. Excuse me there, my good chap. Might you have a match on your person? Um, I... Paradox? Uh... No, but also yes. Ah, well, thank you all the same. Toodle-doo. Okay. I mean, we did have a match, but if we had a match, maybe he would have taken the match. I don't know. Let's see what you got, Jessica. Jessica looks pretty busy, but then she always does. That letter from Uncle Murray was a real surprise. I didn't read it. What did it actually say? Basically, he just asked if I could come visit him because he needed help with something big and he knew I had an adventuresome spirit. Haha, <laughs> adventuresome spirit. Yeah, that's Murray, all right. I haven't seen him in ages. I mean, I only ever saw him at Crimbo, and sometimes he came with us when we went camping in the summer. But after I moved out to go to college, we kind of lost touch except for birthday cards. But you dropped everything to come see him? Um, to see Crazy Uncle Murray again? Of course! Does he still do that trick where he pulls five meat out of your ear? <laughs> what? Ew. Yeah, it was super gross. I loved it when I was ten. Well, I bet he'd do it if you ask him, if you can find him. Here's to hoping. Okay, I think I just need to sleep then. Hey, SDF, before you go to bed, I need you to approve a new tenant for the storefront next door. What? Why is that up to me? Charles shrugs. Someone's gotta do it. There's three applicants for the place. Okay, what are they? The first applicant is Texas Instruments. Guy from Texas selling musical instruments, I suppose. The second is Bertram's, Bertram's Bakery. Bert is a buddy of mine from my restaurant days. He makes a good loaf. And the last applicant is 10 Things I Had About You, a hat store, I presume. Terrible name. We can go with the hat store, which could give us p potentially some perks. Um, Texas Instruments, I like that. And a bakery does sound good, but let's go with the hat store. Despite the name. Okay, I'll get him moved in and get the next storefront ready for applicants. Thanks, Charles. Uh, hey, it's that rug from the boarding house. Mrs. Brewster must have had it sent to you as an additional gesture of gratitude, or because she hates the way it looks and thinks it's cursed. Either way, score. Got ourselves a rug. And I suppose we can go to sleep now. See what kind of dreams await us at night. Is it another dream about school? A fitful dream? What's this way? Nothing. Okay, the bed in which your corporeal self is presumably still sleeping. All of your favorite pants gone. It's Jeff, the kid who used to bully you in third grade. Hey, Jeff, listen, I just... No hard feelings, okay? I understand in retrospect that you must have had problems at home, and I just want you to know that everything is okay now. Jeff swats the overdue library book out of your hands. Ah, I see. Since this is just the dream version of you, you're still as much as a jerk as you were in the third grade. Jeff suddenly punches you, knocking out all your teeth. You got an item. Your teeth. Hey, if this is actually happening, I'd be really mad. Okay, they are unmistakably your teeth. You better get away from him before he knocks out something more important than your dream teeth. Yeah, true. It's that creepy crimbo lady from the refrigerator factor, now in literal nightmare form. Excuse me, I need to get past you. Why? Are you in a hurry to wake up? <laughs> Darling, it's Crimbo. You should be making merry. Crimbo is still months away. Oh, but it's always Crimbo in dreams, dear. Merry Crimbo, then. Merry Crimbo, dearie. I didn't have time to properly introduce myself before. I'm Dark Noel. In an, effect, in an affectation as goofy as her name, she curtsies. Dark Noel, eh? You're really taking this motif seriously, right down to your weird, evil-looking Crimbo hat. Her smile falters a little. Evil-looking? I told you at the refrigerator factory, it's just a... Wait. She points to the weird device she's holding at her hat. It starts beeping in a fast, irregular pattern. You're telling me you can see the special crimbo magic with your eyes? Uh... Yes, if that's what it is. This is decidedly unfestive news. I better talk to the president. You want to talk to Calvin Coolidge about your crimbo hat? I want to talk to the real president about you. I see. Yes, that's the problem, dear, and I'll see you soon with the solution. She scowls and jumps off the edge of whatever this is you're standing on. Ominous. Bookshelf is not behaving the way bookshelves do when you're awake. Take a closer look. Oh, we got a book. Okay. Grants a combat skill, Mind Melt. Deals an opponent's mysticality to itself in hot damage. That's pretty good. Uh, you grab the book at random and the bookshelf puffs out of existence. Let's read it. Uh, the only way to interact with your inventory during a dream is if you had convinced Freddy to hold it for you at the exact moment you went to sleep. I did that. No, you didn't. No, I did. I asked Freddy to hold all my stuff, and he said yes. You don't even know Freddy. Okay, yeah, you caught me. Anything this way? No. You gotta check. You just... Because you never know when we'll get back to a fitful dream again. 
Oh, hey there, Freddy. Actually, it's probably the sunglass salesman. Alarmingly, a man in an expensive suit is standing at the foot of your bed. What the heck? Who are you? You may call me Don Toblerone. I represent a certain organization of, shall we say, like-minded criminals. Organized criminals like the mob? Wait, you're the Don of the local mob? The mob boss? In my room, personally? No, 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 no. I'm not the Don. That is merely my nomenclature. It's an abbreviation for Donald. Oh, well, that's confusing. It's been a matter of some con confiscation. Yes, I do have a sobriquet, but I don't care for it very much. What is it? Donithosaurus. I'm gonna hazard a guess they call you that because you like long words. That is very astute of you. Of course, this astutician comes as no surprise to me. My associates tell me you handled yourself well during the conflagration at the Refrigerator Manufactorium. Uh... And? <laughs> I'm here to propound for your considera considerationing a certain proposition. Come again? I'm here to make you an offer. Oh, can I refuse it? Certainly, though your refusation would be, shall we say, unadvisory. Alright, what's the offer? From time to time, my collegiates and I have certain requirements that, that lack the necessary manpower to achieve them. At such junctures, we make lucrativial arrangements with certain capable individualists. We find ourselves at this moment at a juncture such as the junctures I have thus obscribed. So, you want me to do contract work for the mob? Exactingly. This guy's so obnoxious. Um, sure, why not? An excellent decision, if I may articulize such. So what happens now? Just sit tight, as they say. We'll call upon you telephonically. He gives you a curt nod, then leaves the room through the window. It takes him three or four tries to work the latch. Hey! That's weird. Hey there, SDF, how'd you sleep? Fine until a mob guy crawled in my bedroom window. Oh yeah, that, be that window's pretty lousy. Anyway, the next antique I need you to find is a compass. The direction's kind, not the circle's kind. The Detrectotron says it's near Crystal Dream Lake. I don't know what that is, but I bet it's too far to walk. Do you have a car I can borrow? No, but I have something even better than that. Two cars? A bus pass. There's a stop out front as your gateway to a whole wide world of adventure. An unlimited bus pass for a year. Oh, cool. Well, thanks. Where do I, uh, where do I, where do I go when I get there? Unfortunately, I couldn't get a more specific reading than near the lake. Something about that place is making the instruments go all screwy. Here, take this map. We got a postcard and a lighthouse, so we expanded our map. Um. Okay, this is a postcard. It has a map of the lake on it. It has a picture of the lake on it. Yeah, that's what a map is—a picture of a place. Guess I can't argue with that logic. All right, we were gonna read that book. We can look at the map. You're gonna need to take the bus to the lake before this will become useful. Okay, let's read The Melting Mind. You read the weird book, including all the several page-long footnotes as parts in different typefaces and orientations, and the parts written in languages you don't speak. You gotta go mind melt. You can't help but think there's more to the story than this, though. Maybe you should read it again. If you do, your mind melt will also heal you for 5 HP. Okay, so we can spend experience reading books again. We had some other ones too. Let's read. We got medical manchigo. You flip through the healthy cheese recipes and consider other ways in which cheese might be used for healthy purposes. There are more advanced recipes in the back. It'll heal for an additional thing. Okay. Unlocks advanced shooting techniques. We still need five mysticality, which we don't have. So let's head out. We still don't have, we need smokes and a crowbar to finish up this area. So let's go to the bus stop. Take a bus somewhere. Let's go to Crystal Dream Lake, shall we? Chapter 2. Alright, here we go. The Spooky Forest. Crystal Dream Late light 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 Lighthouse. Okay, light out from this lighthouse. Yes, we just went straight in. Alright, a mirror. You probably ought to introduce yourself first. Oh, okay. The lighthouse keeper, presumably. Excuse me, are you the lighthouse keeper? Sorry to bother you, my name's ASDF Gaming. I, uh, <clears throat> red leather, yellow leather, red yellow leather, yellow leather. Are you okay? I, it's just, uh, I ain't talked out loud in a while, I get rusty. I see, lighthouse keeping's a lonely job, huh? Well, it's solitary, that's for sure. Uh, I mind it though, I ain't exactly a people person. What can I do for you? What does a lighthouse keeper actually do? Well, uh, I used to be, I had to light the lamp every sundown and then douse it again every sunrise to save on fuel. 
used to be when it was an oil lamp. We got a hook up to the electrical grid a couple of years ago though, so now I just leave it on all the time. But all I have to do is change the light bulb once in a while. Sounds very peaceful. Uh, yeah, that it is. Nice and quiet, plenty of time on my hands. You must have a bunch of hobbies. Uh, yeah, I got a book, uh, a whittling knife, and plenty of middle distance to stare into. How'd you get into this line of work? Oh, my family's always been lighthouse keepers on both sides. Ma and Pa kept lighthouses within sight of each other. Used to wink with the lights back and forth once in a while. Oh, that's kind of romantic. You know, I never did figure out how I was actually born. What? Anyway, is there something you needed? Have you seen an old compass around? Uh, the directions kind or the circles kind? Directions. Uh, yeah, I got an old one I picked up in an estate sale about, oh, 20 odd years ago, I reckon. I'd show it to you, but it's upstairs and the lighthouse is flooded. Flooded? Uh, yeah, filled right up to the top. Have a look through the window and there might be, uh, might see a fish pass by. How did that even happen? Pump broke. No, I mean, how does a lighthouse just fill up with water? We aren't even below sea level here. Something to do with the tides, I reckon. This is the lake. Anyhow, I need a Glaxon valve to fix the pump. There's a hardware store down the road a piece if you mind to help out. Okay. Um, it's an arcane oven. Do some cooking. We have basic foods. Um, nah. I don't, I don't need those. Check the mirror. You gaze at yourself in the mirror. Boom. Got five XP. A single book sits on the table. War and Peace, huh? That's a hefty one. Mind the bookmark now. Of course. Oh, it looks like you just started. Been reading it about five and a half years. Your bookmark is still in chapter one. I just about got up to the last sentence of it. I've been reading one word a day. War and Peace is almost 600,000 words long. Oh uh, yeah, don't tell me how it ends. I won't. What's up, IE? Playing some scary games right now? Five Nights at Freddy's? That's a classic scary game. Okay. Uh, through the window, you can cl you can see the lighthouse tower is entirely filled with water. The lighthouse keepers put a little cork in the keyhole. This is a nice chest set. Did you whittle the pieces yourself? Oh, uh, yeah. It took me 16 years. It took you six months to carve each piece? Pawns went through quicker than the tall ones, but more or less, yeah. The uh, horses were particularly tricky. No sense in rushing it. I guess not. Okay, playing Roblox version of that, and it's scary when it's in the dark, it gives you random jump scares, nice. Okay, we need to go to the hardware store, and of course we will be stopping on the way if things happen. You're walking through the woods around Chris- Ah, there's a huge spider! It jumps down out of nowhere and aims its butt right at your face and shoots a huge glob of web at you. Time slows down around you as the horrible sticky wad sails through the air directly at the part of your head where you keep your most important sensory organs. Sorry, I guess that was a weird way to phrase that. I couldn't think of a good synonym for face. You duck and roll out of the path of the incoming goop and just keep rolling until you're completely out of this part of the woods. That was close. <laughs> After a short hike, you find a small hardware store nestled in the sparse woods surrounding the lake. It's a very model of a down-home country hardware store. Except it doesn't have any old-timers sitting out front chewing the fat. Maybe it's their day off. Or maybe they ran out of fat. Okay, I see the... Oh, six hobo code knowledge. Okay. Nice man, ask him for candy. Neat. Okay. Let's ask him for candy. The proprietor, you presume. You're the proprietor, I presume? Uh, yeah, welcome to Valley Hardware, best hardware store in Crystal Dream Valley. Why is that? Because it's the only store in Crystal Dream Valley, huh? Uh, been a long time since I got used to that joke. Don't get many new customers or new jokes. What can I do for you? Do you have any candy? Why, sure, here you go! Increases physical armor by three. It counts as a potion. Pulls out a piece of hard candy out of the jar under the counter and hands it to you. Okay. Uh, ask about a valve. I need a pump valve for the lighthouse keeper. Oh, sure, what do you need? It was a glass and valve, right? Pretty sure that ain't a thing. Maybe it was something else. It was a Glarston valve? Uh, that's a fish tank valve. Uh, maybe it was... Oh, boy. A Glaxton valve? Okay, yeah. It, I didn't realize there were more, so... Uh, Glaxon Valve, well shucks, they stopped making those things nearly a decade ago. I guess there's a slight chance there's still one in the back room, aiming back there since termites got at the inventory. Or maybe after it got flooded. Anyway, it's a real biblical style of disaster back there. Here, I'll unlock the door for you so you can take a look around. If you can find a Glaxon Valve in that mess, you're welcome to it. Thanks, find your step in there. Thank you for the jump scare. 
I'll tell you what, it sure isn't peaceful in this Roblox game. Alright, let's ask for... You know that I do, but you also know that I just gave you some. Don't be greedy. Okay. Uh, what do you have for sale? Let's see if he has a crowbar. He does not. He has steel-toed boots. Have a used uh, plunger. Sharpening stone rivets. A fuse. Cooking with power tools. Deal three sleeves damage to three enemies. That's kind of nice. Add three HP to a hat. Gain one AP. Portable battery technology. Okay, he doesn't have anything that we really need, so... We'll head out and go to... Oh, we need to go to the back... Back room here. Look for a Glaxon valve. Oh, no. Uh... Seepage has caused this concrete to become set in its ways. Got powerful grit. Cool. I'm just looking around, seeing if we can rummage through anything here. Every time you say peaceful? Yeah, pretty much. Pretty much. Something's wrong with this door in a way that termites and flooding doesn't readily explain. You know we're gonna step through it. You step through the hole in the door and immediately feel a sickening lurch in your stomach and a burst of, this was a bad idea in your mind. Uh, when you hit the first drop on a traveling carnival's rusty and hastily assembled roller coaster. After a moment when the feeling has subsided enough, you open your eyes and look around. Your dad has ligma. Nice try. After a moment, when the feeling has subsided enough, you open your eyes and look around, it looks like you're still in the same place you were, except that someone came in and cleaned everything up while you weren't looking. Huh? Uh-oh. Okay, well, this is nice, because now we- it, there's a 1917 calendar on the wall. By the desk, it looks brand new. We just need that valve. We can make- oh, we can make fancy stuff. Spooky damage to all would be pretty good. But, no, let's not make anything yet. I want to keep it. You're serious? Well, you may be serious, but that's not a real thing. Uh, as you leave the store and the shopkeeper spins around and you both stare at each other in surprise, you because the shopkeeper looks quite a bit younger than he did when you went in there, and him because, Hey now, what the heck are you doing in my back room? And how'd you get back there without me seeing you? I'm a termite inspector. I didn't call for any termite inspector. No, I, I do surprise inspections so the termites won't find out in advance. Well, how'd you get past me? Okay, okay. Let's let's cool it down with the ligma jokes. Uh, I am very good at my job. Huh, well, I don't expect you found any termites to make my own custom pesticide. Yeah, it seems pretty effective. I might have to go back in there for a follow-up to check later, though. That's fine, I suppose. Just don't move stuff around too much. I like to keep it tidy back there. This poor guy. He likes to keep it tidy, but he just can't. Okay, so we talked to the hardware store guy. We need- oh, this is the new- new thing, right? That we needed? There doesn't seem to be anything on the other side of the door. Weird. Um... What do we need? We need to talk to him here? It's something with the eye? Welcome to Valley Hardware, best hardware store in Crystal Dream Valley. Because it's the only hardware store in the valley? Hey, that's a good one, I'll have to remember that. I'm sure you will. What can I do for you? I'd like to buy one of those new Glaxton valves. Uh, goofy walking animation? Ah, sorry, government fellows bought my entire stock. What? For the big dam they're building. I can order you one though. How long would that take? Six to eight weeks. Um... Would you mind holding on to it for me if I'm not back right away? Oh, sure, no problem. How long you figure? 11 years. <laughs> what? No, forget how I said it's not a problem. Well, nuts. Listen, I can tell you they bought a heap more Glaxon valves than they're going to need for that dam. If you go up to their work site, you might get the foreman to sell you one of the spares. Where is it? Southeast end of the valley. You got a map? Well, I have a postcard. Crystal Dream Lake? I never heard of that. But it's got a little picture of a dam on it there, see? That's about the same place relative to here. Great, thanks. Okay, so we need to go to... You don't know when you are, much less where. Yeah, okay, so we need to go back to the present. Then we need to go to the dam and see if there's any Glaxon valves laying around. I was about to say nothing happened. Two things, which are hard to describe, but let's say they're more or less like smoking holes in space through which you can see the faint light of distant and dying stars float up to you with the air of menace. The two or- I imagine this is what it's like looking through an ender portal in Minecraft. The two orbs squint at you and Dark Noel's voice echoes inside your head in a way that makes your eardrums itch. That's awful. Well, well, if it isn't my favorite holiday party crasher, perhaps I need to be more explicit about the fact that you weren't invited. I don't really get the holiday thing. 
I like Crumbo, okay? It's my thing and I'm sticking with it. You must have had a weird childhood. I, you, that's none of your business, and neither is the rest of this investigation or whatever you think you're doing. You need to learn to keep your nose out of other people's affairs. I'm just trying to find my uncle. How about you keep your nose out of my affairs? What a disagreeable little urchin you are. Do you know what naughty children find in their crumbo stop stockings? Yeah, a festive cheese log. You swirl your hands in a mystical pattern and launch a cheese log covered in chopped almonds and napalm at the orbs. Dark Noel's screech can be heard through the explosion. Ah, that's it. You're on the very naughty list now. Next time we meet, I'm really gonna deck your halls. The black orbs vanish in little puffs of smoke. Fa la 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 la, jerk. Okay. Goodbye, Dark Noel. This, uh, what, what, uh, what do you call it is huge. The pump has a Glaxon valve on it. This valve is held in place by decades of corrosion. Even if you could detach it, it'd get wrecked in the process. Uh, drain pipe has nasty goo. Let's smell the flower. It smells as good as it looks. Valve is held in place by decades of corrosion. Okay, translate. Oh, this is maximum hobo code knowledge here. The code finds meat hidden in pipe. Oh, you reach into the pipe and snag the concealed and congealed r wealth. 150 meat. Holy moly. Another one of those time doors. Let's hope the repeated exposure to these isn't giving your ancestors cancer. <laughs> okay, Crystal Dream construction site. Pipe shoes, see what's inside. We got pipe shoes. Helps get around, nice. A door is being delivered. Climb up and go through- oh. Right, got it. Oh, ouch. Um, some careless dam worker has an abandoned toolbox here. We got sharpening stone and spray on asbestos. Nice. We can fish in the concrete mixer? Oh no, it doesn't let us. Hey, Noel says, nobody who ain't on the crew is allowed on this site. Noel? Yeah, Noel, the foreman. Noel White. Ah, oh, geez, the man clutches his stomach. Are you alright? Just starving as all the rest of the crew went to lunch, but somebody had to stay here and keep all the rubberneckers and looky-loos off the site. I drew the short pants. Short pants? Don't you mean straw? Nah, we got these six little pairs of pants we found when we cleared out a nest of fairies. I see. Can I have them? No, because then we'd have no way of picking who stands guard. Oh man, I can't believe how hungry I am. Feels like I'm gonna turn inside out. I hate that feeling. What about that table over there that says lunch? There's a reason everyone else left the site to eat, pal. You don't want to eat what Noel considers lunch. How bad could it be? Is it jelly deals or something? Man, I'd kill for a jelly deal. Noel brings these sandwiches that are just a bunch of peppermint sticks between two bland sugar cookies. You can get a stomach ache just watching someone else eat one. Ugh. That sounds awful. That's because it is awful. He clutches his stomach and moans. Well, let's give him a homemade cookie. No, let's give him a, a freshly baked roll. You offer him a freshly baked roll. Oh, wow, thank you. He greedily devours it. His stomach is still growling. How about a homemade cookie? Wow, thank you. He greedily devours it. He's starting to look a little less hungry and a little more rela relaxed. Offer him something else. How about a pressed ham panini? He greedily devours it. If you had to describe his current mood, you'd probably say he's 60% sleepy and 40% hungry. Let's put him to sleep with the, with the extra sweet pears. Oh, wow, thank you. He greedily devours it. He's almost asleep, but he looks just a bit hungry. How about some sardines? Wow, thank you. He greedily devours it. Finally satiated, he slumps to the ground and falls fast asleep. You gain 25 XP. Hmm. Screws, nuts, shafts, discs, cords, picks, valves. We got a Glaxon valve. Brand new. We're gonna step inside the, the thing. We're gonna fish in the sink, and then we're gonna try to fish in the toilet. Handful of clean water. Cure an ally who's on fire. We gained 15 experience for flushing the toilet for that guy. That's amazing. Always flush the toilet. Unless, they're, it, unless it's empty, then don't flush the toilet. Okay, so now we have a Glaxon valve. We can go back to... Oh, we gotta go to the lighthouse. Oh, well. Look, words on a stick! Gabby's pointing at a sign advertising Greta's compassionate pet store with an arrow pointing down the road. I guess we might as well. Do you like animals, Gabby? Uh, yes, Gabby has wants a pet for such a long time, but none of them are any good ever. Not cute enough, or not strong enough. A cute, strong pet Gabby is looking for. Well, maybe you'll get lucky this time. I guess we'll check it out. We already went the wrong way, so... That should be just fine. It's one of those boxes full of bees. A bee box, you think it's called. Oh, cat. 
Meet your next best friend today. It's tuned to the wind chime section. Okay, let's uh, let's talk. Okay, let's talk to the lady. Hello there. Welcome to Greta's Compassionate Pet Store. I'm Greta. Hi, Greta. I'm ASDF. Can I ask you a question? Of course. Where are all the pets? Oh, they're out back. In cages? No, in the woods. I see. What stops them from leaving? Compassion. Hey, what pets do you have for sale? Well, I've got this snake available for adoption. I've also got one giant mosquito left in stock. Tell me more about the snake. You can't go wrong with the world's most dangerous rope. This guy will totally fill your enemies up with poison. Just 150 meat. Maybe not. Giant mosquito? Hey, now don't knock it. Mosquito's great to have on your side in a fight. Not only can they suck the blood out of stuff, they can also pump that blood into you to heal you. That's gross. Mathematically speaking, that's twice the power. Um... What do you feed those? Oh, you don't have to worry about regular food. They'll graze or scavenge for whatever. They're very resourceful. Well, that's certainly convenient. If you do want to soup them up a bit, though, and make them really beefy, I sell some specially formulated familiar chow. I'm a little uncomfortable with the words like soup and beef in a pet store, but okay. Haha. <laughs> Tell me about that special chow. I've got three bags of familiar chow left. Familiar chow is specially formulated to beef up your buddies. Want to buy a bag? Just 100 meat. Yeah, let's, let's get one. Increases a familiar's muscle, muscle, mysticality, and moxie by one, and max HP. That's pretty good. Okay, I'm gonna say I have all the pets I need. I don't know which pet I'm gonna go with long term. So we'll keep the chow for now. Uh, but we have Osborne that increases our stats. Which I don't think he would benefit from getting more stats. I don't know that Todd the Turtle would either. So, because they don't really attack, they just heal and buff. Um, we're headed to the lighthouse, and we will stop on the way, so. Uh, three figures approach you, their faces obscured by the shadows of trees. Wah! Wah! Ooh! Uh, excuse me, what? Who are you? As they step into the light, you see they have human bodies, but their heads are hideous, misshapen, fungal growths. They stare at you with beady black eyes. Wah! Ooh! Wah! Holy crap on toast. Let's try to talk to them. Mmm. Wah! Ooh! Wah! One of them scowls angrily. Ooh! Ooh! Wah! Okay, well, ooh, ooh, wah. Wah, ooh, wah. What if we do the opposite? Ooh, wah, ooh. Ooh, wah, ooh. Ooh, wah, ooh. Um, they're staring daggers at you now. The exchange glances and muttered wah, oohs, then move toward you with a menacing air. Looks like they're fed up with your nonsense and have decided to teach you a lesson you're more able to comprehend. Okay, well, um, this will not end your turn. Five hot damage is pretty good. We only have one XP, so I guess it doesn't really matter. Eight physical damage. I guess we'll take out the physical damage guy. Okay, he's preparing a spell. We can slap him for three. He's going to do eight physical damage to every, but both of them are, so we can do... Five hot damage? Too bad we can't do six hot damage. We can do seven damage to that guy, so we can do five damage to this guy. And then we'll smack this guy with our spatula. And then Gabby should be able to hit him. Oh, only for three though. Ah, poor Oslo. Osborne. Okay, that worked out though. Fragrant spores. That's pretty good. Mushroom steak. That's pretty good too. Alright. Always try to be peaceful, at least. All right, let's talk to this guy. Hi. Lo hello again. I got the valve you asked for. Did you install it? No, I have it right here. Won't do as much good in your hands like that. Go hook it up to the pump outside. Okay, fine. Fortunately, the place where it slots into is clearly labeled. Hi. Hello again. I installed the valve. Uh, yeah, I've been watching the water level through the window here. Should be dry enough for our purposes now. Come on upstairs. Okay. Hmm, most light- most lighthouses have a somewhat bigger lamp. Well, here we are. Welcome to where the magic happens. Magic? Sure. Fiat Lux. Heh, <laughs> old lightkeeper joke. So, can I have the compass now? What? No, certainly not. I need that. But- you asked if I had an old compass, and I said I did, and that I'd show it to you. I never said nothing about giving it to you. Oh, well, I really need it. So do I. Gotta calibrate this lamp to the North Star every so often, and I need a good compass to show me which one is the North one. 
What if you got a new one? Nope, I said a good one. The new ones ain't any use at all. Why not? Because of how they changed them. What? Changed the compasses? They didn't teach you in school? Folks got short memories. It was only around the turn of the century some Atlas company bought the patent on West and rebranded it as New North, and then they did a recall on all the compasses and issued new ones. They all point West now, and that's useless for my purposes. Well, okay, how about I find you an old, another old one, then? If you can find another pre-New North compass in the least good condition as mine, then sure, I'll swap you. Don't really get the point of what that would be, though, since you already have one. Well, that's a long story. Never mind, then. Hey, yeah, maybe this will help you. Most of the old compasses got this radium paint on the dial so you can read them at night. This old Geiger counter, counter ought to be able to pick up the radiation from that. Where should I start? Well, most folks consider the old kind of compass to be trash nowadays, and if I was trash, I'd probably be at the old junkyard. Great, thanks. You only use 60 watt light bulbs? Don't need much, ain't that big a lake. Huh. Alright, let's head to... The junkyard? Location, Sandwich Trial Museum. Um... Yeah, we can go to the Sandwich Trial Museum. I should have read the whole pamphlet. Wow, it's really far. Okay, the village of Sandwich was home to a terrifying witch cult until all the inhabitants were convicted and executed in witch trials in 1692 and the village stood empty and uninhabited for hundreds of years. Come explore the town and learn more. This house is the residence of the Danforth family. Step inside to learn more. Putnam House, which was partially burned down under extremely witchy circumstances. Uh, this trough may have been used to bathe human sacrifices before the ceremony. We don't have evidence of that, but it seems possible. Well, we're gonna fish in it. You got saddle shoes. Ride the ground like a horse. We're fishing again? I didn't push E, but we'll fish again. Uh, I guess we'll keep fishing until we get all the meat. We only have 257. So, a fish in a sack. Current value 14 meat. That's pretty good. Okay. Um, we actually use this well for water, so please don't throw meat into it. Well, we're gonna fish all the meat out of this well, so... Here we go. This is- this is doing the service to this little town. They don't need meat in their water going bad and rotting. Nobody needs that. Okay, we gained 23 meat, that's nice. Nice gazebo. The sign reads, Sandwich Gazebo Vagrants Not Welcome. It's not very friendly. The uh, traces of strange plant material matter in these tubs prove they were used for brewing all kinds of horrible potions. Sandwich boasted the country's very first tripartite outhouse. Please do not attempt to use it. It's very old. An old-fashioned three-seat outhouse. Okay. What's this one? The wealthy Proctor family owned the biggest and most conveniently toilet-adjacent house in the village. This chessboard has clearly been left out on display as an allegory for the battle between good and evil. Black is winning, representing a warning for all good-hearted people to be vigilant against the encroaching forces of darkness. They are reading way too much into this. Okay, the this Aris appears to dis depict several important ancestors of the Proctor family line, though due to low resolution of embroidery used at the time, it's impossible to discern exactly who. It has been pointed out to us that this iris is unlikely to have been manufactured in the capital of the Pas de Calais Department of Northern France. Oh, Pas de Calais. Uh, and therefore is merely a sparkling tapestry. Okay. According to county records, these were the most expensive stairs in the county. They go up a full one and a half floors. Oh, they do go up one and a half floors. The upstairs rooms are off limits while we catalog the contents. Please pardon our dust. This bedroom was traditionally given to servants, as it was felt by the proctors that it would be less of a tragedy if they got up in the middle of the night and fell down the stairwell. Uh, Mrs. Proctor's room bedroom is especially off limits while we figure out how to deal with the strange mold we found behind the wallpaper. Mr. Proctor's bedroom, home to the county's most ex extensive collection of cravats. Uh, this was the bedroom of Peter Proctor, the only child of Nicholas and Abigail Proctor. This was Proctor's spare room, where they kept all spares of all the expensive things they owned. This room is not part of the tour, but is also not part of the house. Um, okay. Interesting. I don't know what this has to do with anything. Leads to a cemetery behind the church. 
Welcome to Sandwich Cemetery, please be respectful of the graves. Also check out how many of them were terrifying witches who were executed in the witch trials of 1692. Oh boy. Okay, okay. That's hobo speak. Uh, the code reads, hollow tombstone, possible treasure. You check inside the stone and there is indeed some treasure. 30 to meat drops, we're gonna equip, equip that one. This thing has a solid gold headband. There's a tag inside that says property of Satchel Duggins, but help yourself if you find it in a hollow tombstone or something. Beautiful. What's up, the Wetch? Welcome, welcome. How you doing? Uh, wrong button. We're gonna equip the lucky hat. I don't know what the uncursed fedora used to do. One to mysticality. I think our mysticality is still three, so... We should be okay. Wow, a lot of Danforths. First playthrough? Yeah, first playthrough. Just trying to do all the side quests. In 1692, the inhabitants of Sandwich were executed in the witch trials that were popular at the time, as evidenced by this old signpost announcing one such trial. Have you finished it already? The altar where the town's witches performed their horrifying sacrifices. Note the blood stains. An old and dilapidated church altar. There are some brown splotches on the corner that could possibly be blood stains. Oh, you finished it already. That was fast. Didn't it come out like last week or something? Everything in this house was destroyed by the fire except these two objects, which are found concealed inside a metal box. There's an antique ragdoll on display. The ragdoll has a bunch of old pins and needles stuck into it, and for some reason it has the word boring embroidered across its front. The little plaque on the front of the plinth says witches frequently use special dolls called poppets to curse their enemies. This one was apparently made to target a Mrs. or Miss Boring, although that n no one of that name is listed in the town records. And then in very tiny text at the bottom of the plaque, uh, the pins were not found with the poppet, but were added for demonstration purposes. Interesting. Uh, I think I picked Cheese Wizard. Yeah, we're a cheese wizard. Because they made the you're a wizard Harry joke at the at the start. It appears to be someone's diary. Oh yeah, the little description on the front of the plinth says Diary of Delia Putnam. So that confirms that. Mostly, it doesn't look interesting enough to be worth deciphering the archaic handwriting and spelling, but you do flip ahead to the last page. 6th of March, 1692. Uh, I hate that Peter Proctor so much. He thinks he can just go around being as mean as he wants to everybody just because he has lots of money and lives in a big house and all. I should have used a much stronger curse. It would have been worth the trouble. So, oh, thank you for the follow. Appreciate that. Oh, there's a guy standing in there. Uh, okay. Hi there. Uh, welcome to the Putnam house. Please don't touch the exhibits. Excuse me, dude. Sorry, sir. I just get paid to stand here and keep an eye on things. I don't actually know anything about the exhibits. Okay. That's great. It's a cat. Um, Hecate? What's the- oh, it's a sign. Uh, the Danforth residence has been converted into a gift shop for your convenience. Why not take home a jar of the sandwich cream that was the village's chief export besides witchcraft? Okay. Off-white stuff in jars. Sounds sus to me. Oh, thank you for the jump scare. Oh, man. Now we got two people jump scaring us. We got IE kind of lurking around and we got the Wetch 21. Condiment reports to be the perfect topping for any sandwich, but the ingredients list suggests that it's just old congealed cream. This special piece of paper is for making rubbings of historical graves and such like that thanks to advancements in rubbing technology. You don't need charcoal or anything. Seems like we need to use that for something, but I don't really know why else we're here. We got a nice hat out of it though. So on our way to the jump junkyard. Uh, on the side of one of the Crystal Dream Lake's many trees, you see something curious. More accurately, you see something strange, which makes you curious. So try not to spoil anything? Thanks, I appreciate it. It's a glob of sap that has hardened into amber, but it shouldn't be here. It normally takes centuries for sap to harden this much, and the tree can't be more than a few years old. Okay. Cool, we got an ingredient. Um... There's a lot of times, though, that I get just totally stuck, because I miss something. A, fishing, a heated fishing rod cooks trash from the inside. Hot rod. Mysticality plus two. Does that count as a fishing rod? Or does that does that count as a as a wand? Let's check. I cannot push the right buttons for some reason. The spatula deals mysticality plus two physical. Let's do let's equip the hot rod. I think it's a magic weapon. Something shiny, a white hot ring. When you apply on fire, apply one extra. Dude, we're gonna get so much stuff from this junk pile. Oh, we need stench armor. Okay, I think we have stench armor. I think we bought something that gives us stench armor, right? Um, no. 
Wouldn't be that. Might be... No, it's not this. Three stench armor, though. Um, no, no, no. No, 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 no. Two sleaze armor. That's probably what I remembered buying. Okay, so we're gonna need to eat something that gives us stench armor. Sleaze armor. Physical armor. Um... Man, we don't have anything. Okay. Well, we don't have any stench armor, so... We'll come back to it, though, when we do. What's this guy? This hobo's trying to wrestle a stove out of a pile of trash. Howdy, I'm Beanie. Hey, Beanie, I'm ASDF. What are you up to? I'm trying to get this stove so as I can haul it back to our hobo camp outside of Ocean City. Oh, you know about the camp? Yep, I'll be cooking up a mess of beans once I get this stove back there, let me tell you. You know any hobo code you can teach me? Sure, heck, I know about a dozen different symbols for beans. Wouldn't one be enough? They all look pretty similar now that you mention it. Okay. Um, let's keep looking around these piles. We need sleaze armor and stench armor. Well, we have sleaze armor. We, we had a uh, potion for sleaze armor, right? Or was it a drink? It was a drink. It was, uh, it was a food. Sleaze armor by three. That's fine. Now we can pull this out. We got a nasty spoon. Deal mysticality plus three. That's even better. Oops. I keep pushing the wrong button. Okay. That's even better than what we had. Need a breath of fresh air. Nah. Time travel? This opening leads to an underground labyrinth of filth. Unfortunately, your Geiger counter is ticking faintly, so you're probably going to have to go in there. I hope you aren't wearing your favorite anything. Turns out this garbage dump is much deeper and older than it initially appeared. Huge rooms and tunnels have been carved out of the trash, like the worst archaeological dig imaginable. Weirdly, it seems like the trash caves are home to a swarm of large, beautifully colored butterflies? You move toward them so slowly so not to startle them, and as you get closer you realize that instead of having regular insect bodies, they're little people. Fairies. Wow. Hello there. Hello! Gosh, you're really beautiful. You're beautiful! Well, that sounded just like my voice. Are you guys mimics? That's real cute. Ah, uh, it's on my face. No, not my eyes. Uh. <laughs> what? Oh, uh, what the heck? You swat away a fairy that had fluttered up next to you and attempted to stab you in the neck with a rusty needle. Heck! Okay, I'll just be on my way. Look out, Jim! That one's got a gun! Indeed, another fairy is approaching, lugging a full-size snub-nosed revolver in his little arms. Hello, beautiful! Run. Uh, okay. There's a shovel. Now we can dig. Are we going to have to dig all over the place in here? We can fight the fairies. Oh, that one did three to all of us? That's a lot of damage. Okay, five hot damage. Do, do any of these guys... That one only has six. Shoot three random opponents. Uh, it's going to thump Gabby. Six physical damage to Osborne. Five physical damage to everyone. Heal everyone on the battlefield. That's good for us, though, if he starts hitting his allies. So we'll do five hot damage to that guy. Oh, it was only two. Okay. Well, I guess we'll just smack him. We could do seven, so we could take this guy out. And then, oh my goodness. Okay, let's heal with Gabby. And then let's, um, five hot damage. Totally cook that guy. We can smack this guy. And then Gabby can't do that much, so we'll heal so we don't die. Seven damage. That is a wallop. Okay, sleeve damage looks like it's doing good. We got fairy cake. We got a wand core. Make any weapon into a wand, which will use its mysticality. That sounds really good. Okay. There's a lot of fairies. That's a lot of fairies. Oh, no. Okay. Uh, what do we do here? Five sleeve damage. Remove on fire. I think probably... Five sleaze damage will take out this guy. So we'll chuck that. And then we'll do hot damage. Um, I guess we can start on... Well, might as well do it to one that'll get hit for five. And then we're doing seven damage. So we can take out... This guy. This is a tough fight though. I don't I don't know that we'll beat it. I don't know that I want to use items without where did that mushroom come from? Yikes. Okay. We got aloof though, plus one moxie. That's pretty good. I don't mind um I don't mind losing fights because we keep getting effects. 
But I don't think we're ready to fight those guys yet. At least not without items, so... Ringing this bell would certainly stir up some ferris. So we can farm XP here. I imagine. And let's fight these ones. We can probably do a first room fight. That one summoned a thing. So let's uh, deal three physical damage there. And then smack him for seven. We can use Gabby to heal for four. I think that worked out to our advantage, so we can we're lethal for almost everybody except this guy. Let's let's be lethal for this guy. I still need to Oh boy. I don't think we can win it now. Yeah. These are tough fights. Trying, trying again. Do we have any items that we can use? I hmm. I don't know. We can just keep trying to fight him, I suppose, and hope for good luck. Okay, so... We can take this guy out. Then we can take this guy out. He's gonna do five physical damage to everybody. He's gonna hit just Gabby. And he's gonna conjure up a mushroom. So, let's take out the guy that's targeted Gabby. And then we'll use Gabby to heal, so if he does five damage to everybody again... He healed five to everybody. Nice. So maybe we can start working on this guy in the back. Oh, we could do it again? I don't know how we got AP back. Oh, he restored one AP to everybody. So we don't need to heal at all. We'll start the mushroom going. So these fights are kind of random, which is interesting to me, at least. Fairy cake, fairy dust. Um, oh, Osmorn grows stronger. That's good. He needed to get... He needed to get stronger. Guess we're gonna fight some more fairies. Okay. They're all the same. They're all gonna hit somebody. He's hitting Osborne. He's hitting me. He's hitting Gabby. He's hitting me. He's hitting Osborne. So we'll let the ones hit Osborne, and then we will... I think we can take down one of them if we use the rock. Yeah. And the minus one to all stats is a bummer though. He's only doing, uh, she's only doing two physical damage. That won't help us at all. So let's just heal. Oh, bad timing on that one. Okay. Can't do what he was planning to do. Gonna hit Gabby, gonna hit me, gonna hit me. So we'll take this guy out with the rock. Oh, but now we're only doing six damage. Okay, we'll take him out with another rock. And then we better go next. Uh, I died. Gabby can't do anything by herself. What a tough fight. Covered with scabs. That's fine. I don't know that we're ready to do these fights. We have, um... We have a little bit of XP. Mysticality would help. So, we'll try that. Okay, more needle people. So, are there two attacking? Oz, there's three attacking Osborne. So we'll let the one attack Gabby. Because Gabby has more XP than I do now. Are any attacking me? No, okay, so... Interesting. Maybe we will throw a rock and then throw another rock and then hit this guy for 8 damage. Why is it 8 damage now? It used to be only 7 damage. Gabby's doing 3 physical damage, so let's slap this guy. Pow. And we can use our AP to heal now. Yep. And we can use a rock here. Three physical damage. So attacking Gabby, attacking me, attacking me, attacking nobody. So let's hit this one. These fights get really easy towards the end. We'll slap that guy for oh, only for two. 
We're going to use my AP to heal myself. And then hit this guy for 7. That'll be lethal. We're going to have Gabby heal everyone. Well, actually, Gabby should probably hit this guy. Because I'll be doing probably less than 7 next turn. And then I can heal Gabby. Yeah, I'm only doing 6. What a play, huh? Okay. Gabby can heal everybody. And then I can do 3 damage and 6 damage. And we got it. Alright, that was pretty tough. Fairy Charm plus 3 to magical weapon attacks. We can equip that. That would be pretty good. Cheese increases Moxie by 1. Okay, let's uh, see what that's about. We currently have 1 Mysticality. I think the 3 weapon magic attack would be better. Let's, we can- what? A foot from a big statue. That's how far away you are from this and what it is. It seems pretty depressed. We got powerful grit. Um, a teetering stack of crates is holding up part of the ceiling here. I'm gonna kick it. Pow! Nice staircase. Okay. Um, Gabby's up here. We got more piles of junk. Oh, we're outside? How do we get outside? Okay, I guess we gotta go the other way. We'll randomize the fight. And we're gonna wrap up after, um... After this... Area. We'll wrap up the stream. Here we go! Oh, this is tough. Especially when they get priority. Okay, that one only has 6 HP. It shoots 3 random opponents for 3 damage each. Okay, this guy's going to heal or damage. This is going to conjure a mushroom. This is going to thump me for 7. This is going to hit Gabby for 6. This is going to hit me for 7. So we need to take down at least one of the guys that's going to hit me. But I should probably heal. And then we can hit this guy. Oh, we can just straight hit him for 10. Okay, so we can use our rocks... Maybe we can use 5 hot damage on somebody. Twice. Yeah, we can cook that guy, and then we can cook him again. And then we can take down one of these guys with just our attack. I think we're doing okay now. Let's heal for 4. Okay. We need to heal myself. And cure negative status effects. We can take one guy out completely. That's going to do a lot of damage to me. That's going to do a lot of damage to Gabby. So I think probably... We need to take... Well, Gabby's going to die, right? Gabby's lethal. Because there's... Oh, no. Gabby's not going to die. Okay, so we'll hit this guy. No, Gabby is lethal. Okay, we'll have to heal... Oh, lethal anyways, because of the mushrooms. Okay, this mushroom is going to be a problem. So I need to take out... That is not what I meant to do. Um, okay, I need to take that guy out. I meant to heal. Bummer. And this guy can't do... So this guy's going to hit me. And this guy's going to hit me. So we need to... Attack the mushroom, which is a bummer. Yeah. Let's try that again. I think I misplayed it. We need to really prioritize the guy summoning the other guys. So we need to take this guy out. Which we can do with 5 hot damage and 11 more damage. But we also can't let other people live. We can do... We can take this guy out completely. We can take that guy out completely. Because that's going to do 6 damage. This one might hurt us and might help us. And then we can take this one out. I don't think anything's lethal. We'd have to have pretty bad luck to be lethal on the first turn. Okay, Gabby does 3 damage, which doesn't help us at all. So, I'm going to just heal. Oh, man. We need to take the stick guys out first. 
Good to know, though. We got angry. What does angry do? Wow, we got a lot of... We got a lot of these um, death ones, so... That's good, though. Alright, we're learning. We're learning. We can keep trying it, though. Because, I mean, we gotta get through it. Hmm. I, yeah, I just don't think we can do it. Like, it really depends on that first turn. Okay, we took that guy out. And then we have two stick guys and a needle guy. And then this is either going to heal or not. So, attacking me, attacking me, attacking nobody. So this is good for us. So we need to take this guy out. Okay, Gabby can heal both of us. Okay, I need to heal myself. And then attack needle guy or stick guy. Stick guy does more damage. We could take him out in one turn. And if we get really lucky, I think we might be okay now. Man. Okay, we got healed, which is great. I can take this guy out. Five hot damage there. I probably should have healed Gabby instead, but I think we're okay now. Because it's just that one that does five damage and three damage. Yeah, wow. We just had to get really lucky for that. Fairy knife causes bleed. For three. Fairy star wand. Deals mysticality plus three physical damage and reduce... Wow, okay. Well, we're going to equip that one because that's way better. Got a wooden handle. Okay, let's equip that real quick. Let's see what's over this way. Okay, there's a portal. Someone's throwing away a perfectly good giant novelty. Piggy bank, you got 300 meat. Wow. And a shadow rift. Which we're just going to have to get to next time because we're out of time for today so thank you guys for coming on by if you're on youtube please like and subscribe it's one or two clicks for you it really does help me out a ton and as always i hope you have a great rest of your day and weekend and i'll see you guys in the next one